It's Brian Preston, the money guy. When you get tight on money, you start looking around and wondering if some of these bad decisions you've made in the past, can I turn this regret into a positive? Yep. And I got to tell you, a lot of times you can sell junk that is sitting around your house. I mean, it is, I know it's crazy. I mean, I'm always surprised and we'll get into the details, but electronics, um, if you if you made some bad decisions on designer clothes or designer accessories like belts or handbags, if you have some watches, um, vehicles, I mean, there's there's all kind of things. There's a market out there. Technology has made it where you can get in front of people a lot easier in the past because there is an analysis. I always have to figure out, is it better to donate it? Or should I try to see if I can go out there and sell, sell this yeah. stuff? And, and I'm fortunate to tell you, there's a lot of things out there that have made this process so much easier. Sure. And now I will tell you, one of the problems, and we're going to talk about some of the tools you can use, is when it does come to selling your stuff, I think that you need to have a realistic expectation. Because I know with my wife all the time, I say, babe, we got to go through, let's just go through your closet. You have clothes you don't, like, you don't wear this anymore. You don't, you know, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, let's at least donate it because that's something we can do. And she'll be like, no, well, I, no, I can't. I know how much I paid for that. You know, you, we anchor right. ourselves to some of the stuff that we've bought that we don't even use anymore. When it does come time to sell your stuff, you need to have a realistic conversation with yourself about what you're ultimately trying to accomplish. Because we struggle with it. We, when, I, when I start doing this, Brian, it's not because of things have gotten tied or things are getting scary. It's because I'm just getting tired of the clutter. I've just yeah. got too much stuff. I want to get rid of it. Make sure you have realistic expectations going into it of what your stuff, you called it junk, I'm going to call it stuff, is actually worth. Yeah, let's get let's give some of these resources. The first one, like designer clothes, Poshmark. You can designer clothes, shoes, jewelry, handbags. Great. Here's one. By the way, I was out in Vegas pre-COVID, mm-hmm. and um, I was we were meeting another couple, um, the former neighbors. They moved back to Chicago, and he took me to every watch shop. He's a watch guy. Okay. I mean, I'm walking around with the Apple, Apple Watch, watch yep. you know, so they're not getting too excited about that. But what was interesting is he has a whole collection. And he was asking the guys, how do I, ch- how do I get rid of, you know, I, I think I want to upgrade, but how do I get rid of all the watch shops were mentioning this website, stockx.com. Huh. You can go and price um, watches. But here's another thing. One of the watch salesmen showed, and I thought this was because we just watched Last Dance. He sells Nikes, Air Jordans, and other okay. things. You can do sneakers, watches, streetwear, collectibles, handbags. Huh. It's pretty incredible if you go on there and just play around with that website. If anything, it will show you what the market value is out there on Great. past sales. So you can use this for yourself. Electronics, gazelle.com. And look, I've used this for myself in the fact that, you know, when I have old iPhones or an iPad or something like that, I'll go see what Gazelle is offering. And I use that as a determination if I should then sell it myself with a service like eBay, mm-hmm. you know, because I have sold electronics. What was funny is I saw the quotes on here of what people could actually get for stuff. And uh, what was funny to me was I saw MacBooks were somewhere between four to $800. Okay. They didn't even know I had put this in the show notes. This MacBooks were four to eight hundred dollars. I believe it was Reby said, "Yeah, I got I got like six hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars for an old MacBook I had." And then Daniel was like, "Yeah, I had a twenty thirteen model that I got like four or five hundred dollars for." So these numbers actually, actually hold legit. up. And this is free money. And Daniel was like, "Yeah, I couldn't believe it, it was a twenty thirteen computer still got me four or five hundred dollars." Awesome. That shows how some of these things will actually hold up their value. So you ought to go look at it. And by the way, if you do, here's a, here's something I have been burned on this and I just want to make a PSA about it. If you do use eBay, eBay I don't know if they still do this, but they a lot of times they will default to a global sales. Um, you need to stay in the US only. There's a lot of shenanigans, a lot of, you know, danger zones if you're trying to sell, you lose some of your protections. If you go outside the United States, they'll try to make you feel better about it on eBay. But I'm just telling you, if you want to save yourself a lot of heartache, I usually stay within U.S. only on those sales. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. This is something we didn't talk about show prep, but I just generally have a curious question. Okay. And this is not something we covered. So nobody in studio knows where I'm going right now, which uh-huh. is awesome. I noticed that all the stuff that we talked about talked about are like sort of electronic <laughs> listings. Electronic. We didn't mention like yard sales or doing garage sales or that kind of thing. Is there a reason that we're kind of sticking to, you know what, price it online, list it online? Is it likely that you're going to get better value if you do it that way than if you just have a garage sale and put it all out in the driveway? I mean, I think when 
Garage sales are designed to just get stuff out of your house. Sure. We wanted to do this show on how you can maximize what your stuff is worth. I definitely think that these techniques are more of a maximization technique. Got it. And so if you're needing money, this is a way to go squeeze every dollar of value out of it. If you're just trying to get it out of the house, garage sales, donations. Got it. That stuff, because look, donations, by the way, are super powerful as well. Because if you're, especially if you're in a high tax bracket, mm-hmm. I mean, where if you think, if you're paying in the 37% federal bracket and then your your state tax bracket is 6% or so, Everything you donate, you're still there's a, a value of forty percent sure. value is coming off the taxes for the the thrift value that you're donating. So that's that's powerful stuff. And we can, by the way, because you mentioned how you would get rid of like lawn equipment, you can get big value from lawn equipment even at yard sales. So yep. I think that's something. But when you're talking about electronics, no, if, I don't care how good your yard sale is. If you set up an iPad, I mean a, a, a MacBook table, you're probably your not going to unload them. You're not going to get great value. You can get gr- that for a weed eater because sure. people will come around yard sales and give you great value on a weed eater, but you're not going to be able to get MacBook Pros sold at a yard sale very well unless you probably live in Silicon Valley or something. And then furniture. I mean, you can go put a couch out in your driveway, mm-hmm. but you're probably going to sell it for 10 bucks. Whereas if you put it on you know, Craigslist or, or Facebook Marketplace... I mean, I sold a dresser. I mean, that for three hundred and fifty bucks, you know, that I paid six hundred dollars for it, brand new. And you use so it I for still, I, we use it and then sold it for three fifty. I was like, this is great. outstanding. So I mean, it is. And that, that, look, this is one. I'm going to go against something that you're probably going to be surprised. My wife has shown me that sometimes this is where brand names actually do benefit you. She okay. showed me on some of children's clothing's where she could. Buy this brand that costs a little bit more, but the market value on resales for some of this stuff was over fifty percent. You it retained Actually over retained fifty value. Same thing with furniture. Like if you bought a Pottery Barn dresser, you're like, gosh, that, that, seems, that thing seems overpriced because I could go on Wayfair and buy something that looks very similar. The resale market on like Pottery Barn is much higher. So there is some some you're give ma- and take. You have you're to making pay me attention. feel so much because I, I, I you make me feel better about some horrible decisions that I've made. In the well, past. no, I, I've done other now custom <laughs> stuff. Like we have a custom couch we bought when we, we first got married. You know, and it's one of those things when you start having some success, you're like, well, I I'm should sure get a custom successful couch. people buy nice furniture. No. Nice furniture gets torn up by kids is what happens. And, and then you, if you pay too much for furniture, you don't want to get rid of it, and you get stuck with this. Yeah. And by the way, nobody wants hand-me-downs on the <laughs> furniture. You think that you're buying an heirloom that's going to get passed down. Your, your kids don't want that stuff. So just be aware that this is a use asset that you'll probably donate, get rid of. So so pay attention when you're buying. But Love it. putting numbers on this, what can you make? Um, we think you can easily, easily – Come up with a thousand dollars from just cleaning out the house, and if you need perspective on that, cell phones, one hundred and twenty-five dollars for a broken iPhone, three sixty for one that's in a good condition, MacBooks, four hundred to eight hundred dollars. You heard from Daniel; his was seven years old, and he still mm-hmm. got a tremendous amount. Gift cards, I guarantee, is a drawer in your house with a bunch of gift cards that you just like. I haven't eaten at Red Lobster in <laughs> sixteen years, you know. And it, but you could. By the way, I like. Cheddar biscuits. So it's not me. I have eaten like, at a Red Lobster. Uh, but Red just, Lobster executives, you're listening. I, I'm thinking about my wife, a- <laughs> but the difference in our, our thoughts on food. But I guarantee you have a gift card, and usually you can get back somewhere around 92% of a gift card's value at some of these online sites that let you sell that stuff. So go out there and find that $1,000. So if we're looking at the scoreboard, again, selling your stuff, that's another $1,000 a year. All right, so I'm seeing brick after brick after brick after brick. It's just starting to turn into some real money. 